Listen, Relove, it's so good to be with you guys um, this morning. God is good. Come on, somebody say. And all the time. Oh, come on, come on. Just declare it like you love him for a second. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, I bring greetings to you just down the road there from Riverside, California. I've been a resident of Southern California for the greater part of two weeks. Somebody ought to say amen <laughs> right there. And um, I'm really excited to be down here um, because my girlfriend is from Southern California. She currently resides in Rancho Cucamonga, California. And uh, we've been long distance actually for about two and a half years. She just moved here recently as well. Um, as she worked on Broadway in New York for the past two years. And um, so I'm just so happy and delighted to be here. Part of why I'm smiling so big is not only that Jesus is good, but that my girlfriend is amazing as well. And I just want to brag about her a little bit and talk about my main man, Jesus. Is that okay with you? Church family, can I get an amen real quick if you just love Jesus in the house of God today? I want to thank really quickly um, your Relove team. I've gotten to be inspired by you guys from afar. I follow you guys on the social medias, and um, it's inspiring to see what God is doing, how God is working, and how God is living through each and every one of you. And so I thank you for what you guys do because it propels and inspires um, other churches, especially mine that I just served at in Sacramento, California. Um, your pastor, Seth Yolorda, is amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, I appreciate him a lot. Yeah, you could clap it up for your pastor. It's okay to give thanks to your pastor. I also know um, your, 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 another member on staff as well, JB. Um, Jeremiah is the name that he was birthed with. And uh, yeah, I know him very well as well. And it's just, it's just an honor and a privilege um, to be with you here, worshiping our God and our King Jesus this morning. Amen, somebody. Amen. We're in the book of Psalm, verse 23. Probably one of the most famous, iconic verses next to um, John 3.16, right? Um, so we're in the book of Psalm. If you would go there with me, uh, we're going to actually tackle all of Psalm. To no, just kidding. Just yeah, this is Psalm class 301, and we'll be here for the next two hours. I hope you brought your lunch with you. Just kidding, just kidding. Psalm 23 and verse 1, go there with me if you have your Bible app, if you have an, a physical Bible, you're actually one step closer to heaven, you're amazing if you have a physical Bible. Uh, but we're in the book of Psalm again, chapter 23 and verse 1, and we're going to read 1 and 6. If you're there, say amen. Amen. If you're not there, say, Pastor, hold on up. Amen, everybody? Amen. Simply says this, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And verse 6, surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Bow your heads with me, church family. Father, we declare to you in this moment that you are our shepherd, that you are our king, regardless of the circumstance or situation that we might find ourselves in. Father, may we continue to declare you are our shepherd, and you are our king. No matter what we go through, no matter what journey we're on, no matter what season, no matter what place, Father, may we declare in this moment, you are our shepherd. 
We thank you, O oh Lord, for bringing us to this specific moment. And we ask in this time, O oh God, that you might open the doors of heaven and pour out a blessing. O oh God, we thank you, thank you, thank you so much that you give life, that you enter our lungs and give us breath. Great are you, O oh God, and that's all that we want to declare today is that you are our shepherd and you are our king. We love and thank you and let everyone say in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Uh, as I've told you, I used to pastor in Sacramento, California. Um, and while I was in Sacramento, anybody like jazz in the house of God today? Any, any jazz fans? There was a uh, jazz festival just a year ago in San Francisco, and Sacramento is about an hour and a half away uh, from, from, from San Francisco. And so uh, I got some tickets with uh, my friend, a fellow colleague, a, a pastor as well. His name is Pastor Rebel, and uh, he pastors in Grand Advent Church in Oakland. And um, I don't know if he's watching this currently, but if you are, I'm gonna just blow your spot if that's okay with you. But he used to, um, excuse me, at the same time that he was pastoring, um, he was pastoring part-time, but at the same time that he was pastoring, he, he obviously needed some extra income. And so he uh, Ubered in San Francisco, California as well. And no, no word of a lie, you could land two, three hundred dollars um, in a matter of hours um, driving Uber in San Francisco. It's very popular. Um, people use it all the time, and that's what he was doing as his side hustle, right? And um, so I, I went to San Francisco to meet him. We got some tickets. We chopped it up. And uh, he picked me up um, because I had left my car on the other side of the bay in Oakland. Um, and I took the train in because uh, traffic from Oakland to San Francisco is pretty much just like here to L.A. It's horrible. So I took the train in. It's called um, BART, Bay Area Rail Transit. And I pulled into uh, the shopping mall, and I had some free time looking through um, some shops. And there was Barney's New York that I entered into. And I picked up a shoe, and I said, I don't know why I'm picking that shoe up. It, the shoelace costs more than my whole outfit. So I put it on back onto the shelf where it belongs. Mercy, somebody. Just, just window shop, that's all. And so he called me up and he said, hey, man, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Um, are you ready to, to, to head to the venue? And I said, yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Let's go. So he picked me up in his Uber and we were driving, talking, chopping it up. And, uh, and he was just like, man. And I was like, where? Okay, yes, what? It's like, man, I just missed it. And I was like, what did you just miss? And he's like, dude, like, if I just got one more ride, I would have got a bonus from Uber. And I was like, okay. And he's like, yeah, man, I just, you know, so frustrated because I guess the bonus was, was a lot of money. And so we, we head to the venue and we're listening to this band that we don't know. We just, because we just got cheap tickets and we wanted to go see a show and it was, it was fun. And so we went to go see this band we did not know and had a great time listening to music, both uh, avid lovers of music. I joke around to my girlfriend all the time and uh, tell her that I probably go on more dates with Rebel than I do with my own girlfriend. We, we seem to have gone to so many concerts together. It's it's almost uncanny what uh, myself and Rebel um, go to, and, and my girlfriend always leaves jealous. And I'm just like, listen, you're in New York, so I guess Rebel is like the next, next best thing, right? <laughs> um, but uh, but we, we're, we're, done with the, we're done with the show, and we're 
about uh, to leave, and we're, we're sitting in the front row, and we turn around and look at the sea of diversity um, in the building. And we look at each other, and we look back at the sea of people again, and then we look at each other again and ask the question, why doesn't our church look like this? Why isn't it filled with whosoevers? Why can't our church look like this? And we, we sat down and we wrestled with that a lot um, because it seems as though we're welcoming as a church body, but we're not quite that welcoming. Like you kind of have to have some sort of thing to fit in, whatever that thing might be. And so we're like welcoming, but like not really. And me and my pastor friend started talking about that. And uh, it dawned on me um, that it very much related to the story of Jesus and what he did in Luke chapter 15 and verse 1. You don't have to go there, but the Pharisees recognize him as eating with sinners. The Pharisees look at him and they literally say in verse one, look at this man, he eats with sinners. He's on the same table as sinners. And I'm wondering, church family, this morning, are we recognized in that way? Where we welcome anyone onto the table where the center focus is love. I'm wondering, church family, this morning, if that's what real love is recognized for. I'm wondering this morning, will we sit on a table with sinners and sup and commune with them and have love be the center focus. So we go on and we're here um, uh, at, the, at the venue. And uh, one thing that's famous about San Francisco is this thing called mission style burritos. And so I haven't been in San Francisco for a while. And Rebel suggests, hey, could we get some mission style burritos? They're they're just called mission style because they're on the street called mission, but they're just burritos. And so we go and, and have these burritos and he's talking to me and he's telling me about his stresses. And most of the times when pastors come together, we talk about pastor things. So he talks to me about the stresses of, of, of his church congregation and what he has to do. And we're having this burrito, and we're chopping it up, chopping it up, chopping it up. And lo and behold, it is midnight. Somebody say mercy. It's midnight, and like I said, Sacramento is an hour and a half from San Francisco. And so I still had to drive an hour and a half back home. Somebody say mercy. Um, but he gets another text, another beep goes off on his phone. And he says, hey, man, I could get this bonus right now. And I look at him, and I'm like, okay, what do you want me to do? You want me to stay in the burrito shop while you, while you Uber? And he's like, would you mind, please, if you just came with me? We'd just, we'd just pick up this passenger, take them to where they need to go, and that's it. And I'll take you back to your car, I promise. I was like, in my head, I was like, man, I'm so tired. I really don't feel like going. But you got to be a good friend. Amen, somebody? And I, I, had to, I had to do it one time for my boy and his hustle. So I said, all right, I'll go. I'll go with you. So we go to the airport. The airport's about 20 minutes away from uh, where we are. Go to the airport, it's 12.30. Yes, everybody with me so far? And yes, thank you, thank you. 
1230, pull into the airport, and he says, man, I got to pee. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah, 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 the, 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 our passenger is taking forever in the baggage claim. Let me just pull up real quick. He pulls up into the international terminal, talk about an awkward transition for me, and he just runs out into the terminal and goes to the bathroom and leaves me in the car by myself for me to get arrested at the departure terminal. Talk about an awkward transition. Stay with me now, church family. I promise we're going to get somewhere. Talk about an awkward transition. And here I am the whole time like, what in the world is this guy doing? Police sirens are behind me. Luckily, they didn't come out. They're just waiting, staring at me, and I stare right back at them. It's like looking at the driver's seat. I'm, he's like, okay. He keeps on walking, tells other cars to go. It is 1 o'clock in the morning. Somebody say mercy. And I am livid at this point. Here I was trying to do a favor with a friend. And here he is, leaving me high and dry. What in the world are you doing? And that sometimes can be very relatable to our spiritual walk, yeah? Where we're wondering as we go through life, finding ourselves in awkward transitions, wondering, God, where is it that you're trying to take me? After going circle and circle and circle around terminal after terminal after terminal and finally stopping at a point thinking, oh, this is where you want me to be, God, and him seemingly leaving us high and dry. Has anyone ever been in situations like that before, seasons like that before, where you're wondering, God, where is it that you're trying to take me? Where is it that you're wanting me to go? I've been following you this whole time. I've been listening to you this whole time. I've been serving you this whole time. Where is it that you're wanting for me to go? Where is it that you're wanting for me to land? God, I've listened to you. I've prayed and I've done everything that I possibly could. And yet still there is no answer. Still there is no direction. Still, I find myself seemingly feeling alone. Anybody, anybody ever been there before or is, it, is, is, is that just me? And, and I grew so frustrated in this moment waiting for Rebel. Um, and finally, he struck. I love this guy. I love this guy. I do. I love this guy. He strolls out of the international terminal. You know how the doors go like, right? You know, you know how the doors go like that? Just strolls on out like, like nothing's wrong. 1.30 in the morning as I waited for him in the car. Enters the car and I did not say a word. Otherwise, I would have ripped his head off. I'm telling you. Enters the car and he says, my Uber is here. And the whole time I was thinking like, man, I should have just been your Uber passenger so you could get that bonus. I would have just paid you. So I could go home <laughs> and sleep on my beds. Woo. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I really, really, really love my bed, and I, and I hate to sleep over anyone's house. I want to get home. And my, this time I was thinking, please, please, just hurry. Pick this person up. I want to go home. I want to go home. I want to go home. So he swings around the domestic terminal. He says, yeah, my Uber ride's here. I was like, great. Two o'clock in the morning. Somebody say, mercy. Say, great. Are they coming now? And then he said, yeah, they're actually right here. And at the corner of my eye, mind you, two o'clock in the morning, sleepy as anything, coming from the domestic terminal is what seemed like an angel coming before me and knocking on the window of the passenger door was none other than my girlfriend, 
coming to surprise me for an early birthday present all the way from New York. And I looked at her. I didn't even open the door. I looked at her. <laughs> you know, with the schemy eyes, right? And I looked at Rebel and I said, really? <laughs> this is what both of y'all have been setting up? <laughs> Uber ride. <laughs> liar, and you're a liar too. <laughs> because she had told me she was in a sleepover with her friends and they had this like no phone thing and she made up this whole story, right? And so I open the door and she says, surprise. I give her the biggest hug. Why am I telling you this story? Through the whole time that I was waiting, I had no idea of the blessing in store for me just around the corner. But I had no choice in that moment other than to trust in my friend. And sometimes, church family, you have no choice in the moment regardless of whatever circumstance you're in. You have no choice other than to trust that your shepherd knows what he's doing, to trust that no matter where you are, no matter what situation you find yourself in, no matter how long you've been waiting, church family, no matter how, how much of a struggle it is that you're walking, regardless of the situation and the circumstance, church family, I'm here today to tell you that your shepherd knows exactly what you need even before you knew you needed it. Because the Lord is our shepherd, and we shall not want. He knows exactly what we need. And David is penning this, this specific portion of psalm with personal experience. And our keyboardist can sprinkle, sprinkle as I land the plane here. We're almost done. And we'll be on our lunch. Amen, somebody. Come on for some good food. Yes. But David pens this, this chapter specifically out of personal experience. Somebody say personal experience. And David knows full and well the, the awkward situations that he sometimes finds himself in. And he pens the scripture knowing full and well what it takes to take care of sheep. He knows full and well what a sheep needs, what kind of nurturing it needs, what kind of green pastures it needs to eat. And a shepherd knows as well how to find a sheep when it is lost. Don't believe me? Go to Luke 15, chapter, uh, Luke chapter 15. Jesus talks of a story of the lost sheep, and we mentioned it a little bit earlier. Jesus talks about a lost sheep, and Scripture clearly says in Luke chapter 15 that he will go until he finds his lost sheep. Until. It's in Scripture. You can read it. Until he finds that one. Talk about love. Listen, church family, I just want to say this before I go. He knows how to find you. He knows how to guide you. And he will always sit beside you. The whole time in my worry and my wonder of where I was going, Rebel knew exactly where I needed to be. And he was right beside me the whole time. I could only imagine what was going on in his mind because he saw the blessing before I did. And I'm here to tell you today, church family, Regardless of your circumstance and the situation that you find yourself in, hold on. Trust in him. 
for he knows exactly when to release the blessing that's going to take you to places you could have never imagined, that's going to lead you to even more blessings in store. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Surely, goodness and kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I'm wondering, church family, could we declare that we will dwell in his house forever. I'm wondering today, church family, could we declare from a real place, I will dwell in his house forever. I'm wondering, church family, today, because listen, he can be our shepherd, but only if we allow him to be. Are you with me, church family? He knows how to find us, but the question is, is do we want to be found? He knows exactly where to put us. But will we have the faith enough to listen to him in the midst of it seeming like we're going in circles, and circles, and circles? Talk about an awkward transition. God knows everything about awkward transitions. And he reveals to us to hold on to dwell in his house forever. For the Lord is our shepherd, and we shall not want. Father in heaven, we thank you, O oh God, that in your son Jesus, we have everything we could possibly need. We thank you, O oh God, that in your son Jesus, we find life and life in abundance. We thank you, O oh God, that in Jesus, we may know what real and true love is. God, we thank you that not only do you know how to find us, but that you will also guide us and that you will always be right beside us. God, we hold on to what you say in your scripture. We declare here and now that you are our shepherd and you are our king. And God, we, we don't want to live a life without you. This is our prayer. This is our plea. No matter what situation we find ourselves in, no matter what circumstance we find ourselves in, whether we keep on serving and we're not seeing any results, we keep on praying and yet no answer has been seen. Oh God, help us to know that you're not going to leave us alone. You're great. And you have something more in store. God, oh, help us to just hold on in those moments. So that we can declare in the midst of those moments, you are our shepherd. And you are our king. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.